I'm going to start uh, the session with introduction uh, of uh, Prakash. And as I said, he's my ex-colleague. Uh, he, he worked with me or I worked with him, uh, both ways it's the same. And uh, when I was in Germany, uh, he was my mentor. The reason was uh, we were working with a German boss, uh, a very good guy, uh, Mr. Frank Rosen. And uh, I was not directly uh, actually talking to him. I was talking to Prakash and then uh, Prakash was actually uh, taking it through uh, uh, Frank. So I remember those days, uh, very funny uh, memories. We, we have very good memories also. And it's very, very, uh, I'm really, very happy that Prakash is here to share uh, his knowledge with us, which is extremely important in today's day, where how you propel your car is not that important. You can propel it using IC engine, you can propel it using hydrogen fuel, you can propel it using battery, you can propel it using even an compressed air. It doesn't matter. What matters is whether the vehicle is safe. Okay, so uh, if vehicle is safe, how you propel is a little bit like uh, off the topic discussion. Okay, so we are going to talk about a new car assessment program and we are also going to talk about uh, very fundamentals about uh, the engineering and the physics. So uh, Prakash is having almost uh, 15 plus years of experience in crash and safety domain. Uh, he has worked in NVH also uh, and uh, he has worked to the full crash analysis. So it's not just vehicle say so I, I myself I haven't never I have never worked on a full vehicle. Okay, so it, it's what I, I do. I am only working on seating system or I'm working on interior system. So I'm still working on a subsystem level. We are working on a full vehicle, but we are working for blast. So we are not working for a full vehicle crash. But whereas Prakash has worked through a full vehicle crash, he has worked through uh, uh, the NCAP, he has worked through the regular regulations as well. That is government regulations. Uh, he has uh, developed several CAE practices. I'm going to read through because uh, I don't want to miss anything. So he has developed several CAE practices which are still followed by OEMs. So the best practices are being developed and then they are getting followed in the original equipment manufacturer side. Wow, we are almost 163 people guys. Thank you, thanks a lot for an amazing response. It's been a pleasure hosting you all through Heroes of Engineering. I'm really, really very thankful to you guys from bottom of my heart, thanks a lot. Uh, he has uh, worked as a team leader in field of occupant safety and pedestrian safety. So this is something which is a, a new field for us, the pedestrian safety, where we are trying to understand what happens to a pedestrian when a vehicle hits at a slow speed uh, to that particular, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, or with an occupant. So it hits an occupant. Main customers, of course, he worked with Adient, uh, he worked with Continental Safety Engineering, Volkswagen, uh, he worked with Bentley, Porsche, Daimler, and Ferrari. So uh, I think I don't have to introduce uh, him furthermore after we take brand names which are pioneer in their own field. And uh, he has expertise in full crash model building, analyzing, calculating dummy injury points. That is the pain area which we are going to discuss today. What is an injury? What is the star rating? All these things he will take you through. Okay, and uh, 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 the point is, he is actually an expert in manually calculating the dummy injuries for the star rating, which is not a, not, which is like a uh, operating system de design itself. So he is able to actually create a complete system which can be implemented in an OEM or at a service level. And that is something which is extremely powerful because that, that is something which we all should know. Okay, so we will try to discuss what are the various things in NCAP, what is it uh, happening behind the scenes, what are the various costs happening, all these things we will try to cover up. So uh, are you guys ready? Type in ready if you are ready for the session. Type in R, R, R. Quick, guys, we are 178, so we are good to go. R, 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 yes, perfectly fine. 
that is something which i want perfect thank you thank you very much for the replies i want you guys to be active as active as possible make sure that you are learning make sure that you are writing down make sure you are interacting with the with me with the uh, with prakash okay so uh, uh, this is the time prakash you can take over so thanks nachiket thanks for the good introduction and uh, thanks for uh, such a warm welcome also and uh, here uh, here really here also, i am also please, uh, feeling the pleasure to just communicate with all of you and uh, it is really a very uh, happening and nice moment for me i am really happy to share all my knowledges which i have gathered in my last 15 years of career so guys uh, first thing i just want to tell you this is the very simple physics what we have actually we have learned in our past days but while working we are not thinking about and we don't apply actually so it is it is nothing a rocket science it is it is nothing a very complicated thing only thing is we are while working with company we are really in so much pressure that we just try to finish our job delivering the job and after that we are just going home and relaxing and we are not thinking about what actually we are doing so for example just a quick example if uh, let's say in a analysis of just some static analysis where you are applying a static load or you are just calculating some uh, deformation on the body and it, and if it is failing or let's say some problem in cae due to some node or elements problem we just try to solve it we just do it if it is failing the design is not passing we are just trying to do changing the material changing the thickness and then we just go home and just take the rest so here while starting the end with what here starting with the end cap before that i will just refresh your uh, physics knowledge what you have just everybody has learned actually i am sure about that everybody has learned these things in his uh, 12th class and i will start from from there because i want to keep the things or i want to make the things as simple as possible for all of you so that you can understand it very well so prakash so I, one thing uh, yeah, let's understand uh, what is the audience uh, actually looks like so i have a poll ready i'm okay. uh, guys i'm going to launch a simple poll uh, you just have to click in uh, i just we will just get an idea uh, how is actually uh, audience scattered around okay so uh, i'm launching a poll in 3 2 1 here we go so just uh, give me the answer so everyone knows that uh, 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 this is what i am just read through are you an undergraduate are you a graduate engineer searching uh, for a work opportunity are you a working cae professional are you a working professional cad engineer are you a working professional other may be in quality may be in manufacturing are you pursuing post graduation are you uh, a post grad and searching for a work opportunity so that uh, i think prakash will get a very good idea uh, what is happening so prakash i'm going to share my complete screen so that you can actually see my poll is it uh, is it visible guys the poll is visible okay so uh, it's just going to be another uh, almost 156 180 uh, okay so prakash you you will get an idea almost 46% of the population today which we have attended mm -hmm. today are working cae professionals okay. so okay. that's a, that's a very good point for you also to start uh, discussing and exactly. of course there is a good amount of participation from i'm really very thankful to the professors uh, through whom i tried to put the message uh, for today's session the graduate engineers uh, searching for opportunity and even the undergrads those who are working in third year or final year uh, uh, of their engineering career thank you very much guys and i am not going to interrupt any more so uh, this is this is a poll which you can just uh, look at it and uh, then uh, you can start or uh, try to incline your discussion thanks prakash over to you again okay okay thanks so it's good that 46% of people are already working in cae and it's really uh, helps me also a lot to explain you guys the things and the working environment 
as i told that i am going to start with a very simple physics and i am sure that everybody has learned these things in his 12th class and i am starting the topics from there so that you can easily understand that what exactly you are doing while while making the analysis or while doing the analysis just a moment yes uh while doing the analysis so uh, nachiket can you please go to slide number 5 yes and uh, make it just enlarge so that everybody can see that yes perfect so here uh, i start the things with basic physics involved in the car crash actually uh, you know that the car crash is completely a dynamic thing so it is but completely dynamic as you already know that the velocity is involved here and hence the newton's law all the newton's law and the energy converge converge conversation is applicable here so this principle uh, helps us actually to optimize the body and the subsystems so for example if you are working on a subsystem like seat system or working on the sub assemblies like the instrument panel or door panel so everything in the car definitely you are working on the subsystem but in the last it is coming under the dynamic behavior why because it will be fit in the last in the car and the car is going to crash uh, in testing so in this way it is completely a dynamic testing you can say that it's it's not a static testing and here i am just refreshing your knowledge with the newton's three law and here if you will see that the, on the screen also you can see that the first law that is the law of inertia where it says that the if no external force is applied then the body will remains in equilibrium it means that if the body is moving and the force is not applied then the body will always move and if the body is in the rest it will always be in the rest if no external force is applied the second law of motion you know that this is the f is equal to m a m is the mass a is the acceleration here this is the completely dynamic and uh, about so this means that you need a force to accelerate a body the second law of newton just says this about third law is called the action reaction action reaction means whenever you know that when you are applying a force on any body then the body also resists and apply the same amount of reaction force this third law is going to help us here to understand the basic car crash behavior so here you can see that in a collision um, the body experiences a force at a particular time so here the time of crash is maximum you can say that 60 70 millisecond so in 60 to 70 millisecond the complete things over but yes for the equilibrium in the cae we calculate sometimes to 90 milliseconds sometimes to 100 milliseconds sometimes to 150 milliseconds it depends on the load cases definitely so when we are applying the force at for the particular time so what actually happening in the crash so the body is going to change the velocity and this is a complete physics which is going to work in the car crash so just we will just go to the another slide to understand this what is happening in the car crash so here you can see that uh, how these basic principles applied in car crash so uh, i am just taking a very uh, common crash scenario so where a truck and the car is crashing and or moving in opposite directions and uh, get the collision definitely the mass of the truck is more than the mass of the car so uh, n cap actually before as i told that before explaining or before touching the n cap we must understand that what is actually happening in the car crash what is our goal and what actually we want to achieve through n cap or with any kind of regulations or rules and regulations what you what you guys are calculating i mean the people who are already working in the ca field what exactly exactly they are doing so here if we take the example of this uh, truck and the car collision so uh, as i told that the newton's third law is applied here when the both vehicles come and crash to each other so let's say the force applied by the truck on the car is f and as uh, per newton's third law the same force is also going to applied by the car on the truck so collision time so here you can see that the first equation says that f is equal to f correct the f is the action force 
and the another I have written on the right side is the reaction rates. So now collision time is fixed for both the bodies, right? So the collision time for the truck and the collision time of the car is same because the time of contact is same for both the bodies. So let's say we multiply this delta t. Delta t is the time of contact of both the vehicles or you can see the crash time it is the same so here f car multiplied by delta t is equal to c is equal to uh, f truck multiplied by the delta t so the left hand side f car and the right hand side is the f truck the force on the car the force the reaction force of the car and the action force of the truck so here i have applied very basic physics and here impulse if you will see that impulse is equal to the change of change in momentum this is a very basic principle and here the first equation f f cross f multiplied by delta t this was the impulse and based on this basic principle i have just converted this in the momentum so m small m is the mass of the car and delta v capital capital v the capital v here signifies that the change in velocity is more why is more because the car mass is less so to balance the equation we have to give here the bigger delta v otherwise the equation is not going to balance the mass of the truck is more and the mass of the car is less so to balance the equation the change in velocity of the car should be more in compared to change in velocity of the truck so in this way the equation will get balanced here so here you are saying that just for the sake of balancing the equation just this you can say that the basic physics law so the change in velocity of the car is more in compared to change in velocity of the truck okay so now you can see that i have just removed the mass in my another uh, equation because here i just want to show you that the change in velocity of car that is the big v big delta v is obviously greater than the smaller delta v but now think in this way okay here up to here we it is very clear to us that change in velocity of car in collision is more than change in velocity of the truck okay so guys up to here everything is clear just please type yes why otherwise okay yes clear guys Perfect. okay great thanks for feedback okay so now here i am just slowly start moving in the direction of n cap thanks guys so as everybody has understood that change in velocity of car in the collision is more to the change in velocity of the truck okay but here the same almost same mass of person is sitting in the vehicle as a driver in both the vehicles so we are talking here about the truck driver and we are talking about the car driver who are actually getting the injury in this collision so the mass of driver and the mass mass of driver of a truck and mass of driver of the car is same almost same let's say both are adult person and the mass is same so now the ma i have just up multiplied by this mass of the driver with my difference in velocity equation both side and here you are seeing that the change in momentum the left hand side will be more to the right hand side so it means that change in momentum of the car driver is more in compared to the truck driver so this is this says the physics but the real example or the practical example also says the same thing here i have just proven this with the help of physics 
and you can imagine just in real car real crash scenario if a truck if a car is going to collide with a truck then definitely the injury to the car car driver will be more why because the change in momentum of the truck sorry of the car driver will be more why more because the delta v of the car driver is more so when the change in momentum of the car driver is more so it means that he is going to be injured severely than the truck driver and that also happens in the real crash scenario when a car is hitting a truck so from here i think everybody has understood that what is happening in the crash so here the objective of the end cap or objective of any any regulation in the world related to the car or to make the safer car is just to make the car safer what does it mean to make the car safer it means that the person should be less injured whether it is hitting a pole where the car is hitting a lorry whether a car is hitting a rigid wall so ultimate goal is the injury to the driver or to the occupant should be minimum and that is the goal of any regulation or any end cap in the in the world here now i will touch little bit because most of our uh, participants here let's say uh, as my colleague nachiki has told that 46% people are here uh, already working in this game so i believe that they are working in the sub system analysis so what happening in the sub system analysis what actually you are doing so i will tell you it is very uh, very basic things i have also worked and i was also coordinator for the car crash uh, for the company car analysis so what what actually oem does or when they are giving a project let's say the development of the seed system analysis uh, let's, let's say development of the seed system or they are giving a project to let's say to ad and just to develop a instrument panel or door panel so what they are doing they are just telling that okay you analyze your own subsystem and the where it is fixed to the car just take it as a rigid and you make your system perfect hand over to us and then we will integrate that that subsystem in our car so what exactly they are doing here the contact point from the sub assembly to the car they are just telling that make it rigid or fix so just for example if the people are working here in the seating system might be you have noticed that the um, biw you are making as rigid so the dummy feet where it is contacting to the floor you are making it rigid why are you making rigid the reason is very simple that complete energy of that sub system is going to be absorbed by that sub system only it is not going in the car body and in this way you are developing your sub system making it green and when you are hand over into the complete uh, or to the oem and it is integrated in the car body then what happens your sub system is designed for let's say 30% safety safer side because you have taken the floor as a rigid but in reality what is going to happen in the complete car crash the floor is also going to absorb some energy so in this way it is uh, well known that your sub system is going to help or going to withstand in the crash because now it is now the floor of the uh, car is also absorbing some energy and your sub system is designed with some 30% let's say safer side because you have considered the floor of the car or the floor as a rigid while developing your sub systems so in this way the sub system is uh, developed now i am just going to the another part here as i already mentioned you guys that change uh, the momentum uh, in the momentum faced by uh, car driver is more in compared to truck driver so the car driver is severely injured 
to the uh, truck driver. Now we are just going to the another slide here. Now uh, from here it starts the fundamental of the safeguard. So all all the designing regulations and caps are just to make the whole car safe against the crash. I have already in, told you these these informations. So here I have also talked about the sub assemblies. How are you making safe? The same point is written here. So we do analyze and optimize the stiffness of car and some assemblies in such a way that the change in velocity delta v should be smaller. So I have already told you that when you are designing your subsystem, so what you are doing actually, you are just focusing on your system and making the other parts rigid, which are going to come in contact or going to be fixed on the car body. So in this way, you are developing your subsystem. And here, the target of the OEM what the OEM is targeting, the target of OEM for the complete car to design or to make the whole car in such a way that the change in velocity delta V should be smaller. So when the car collision is taking place, uh, whether it is with the rigid wall, whether it is with the uh, with the truck or where it is with the pole. So, the change in momentum, we try to keep as less as possible so that the injury or the momentum of the driver will also be lesser so that the injury to the driver or to the occupant will be less. But here, what is the challenge? Yeah, yes, you can do that. You can, uh, you can make your uh, car, uh, let's say, more softer, or let's say, uh, you can design in such a way that it can absorb more energy, and then you target a spinach. No, the challenge is, let's think in this way, if you are making the car body too stiff, or your sub-assembly is too stiff, then what is going to happen? You have the car too stiff, and when, the car is too stiff and hitting to a lorry, so it will hit to the lorry and then it will bounce back because it is a inelastic collision. It is not an elastic collision. So the car is too stiff. It is hitting to, let's say, a rigid wall. It is hitting to a lorry and then it will bounce back. So just think in this way, the car is moving with a 60 kilometer per hour hitting a lorry or hitting a rigid wall then it is bouncing back. The bouncing back, what does it mean? The bouncing back, it means that now the car is having the velocity in opposite direction. That is the bouncing back. So let's say a car is moving at 60 km per hour, hitting a rigid ball and then bouncing back. Bouncing back means now the car is moving in opposite direction. So that is the minus velocity, I would say. So minus, it indicates, as you know, that the velocity is a vector a quantity. So minus indicates the direction. So direction. In this way, from plus 60, you are achieving to zero. And from zero, while, bound, while bouncing back, you are just getting to the minus 30. So the difference is actually the delta V is 90. So the difference is velocity, if you say it is 90. 90 km per hour. In this way, if you are thinking that the car is too stiff and it is uh, bouncing back, delta V is huge and then the momentum to the driver will also be bigger and injury will be more. Now come to the point, okay, if I will make the car weaker, let's say the car is colliding and then let's say the car is having a velocity of 60 km per hour, hitting, a velo hitting to the ball or hitting to the Truck, and then after hitting, it is just getting the velocity zero and is stopped there. It means that the whole energy is absorbed by the car. So it, ha it has the velocity 60 and after collision, the velocity is zero. Zero means it is not bouncing back at the same contact point, it has stopped. So what happening then here? Yes, you are right, the delta V is smaller, 60. Okay, so from 60, you have achieved the velocity zero in the collision. So here the delta V is 60, but what happens if the car body is weak? So the definitely the change in momentum is lesser. So the change in momentum to the driver is also lesser. 
but here the intrusion will be more intrusion means the car body may be collapsing till the a pillar or maybe till the driver seat and when the intrusion in the car body is more then definitely your air bag your seat belt is not going to help let's understand this in a very practical way i think everybody has seen that maruti van nowadays this maruti van is not uh, i think the production has been stopped earlier back but the maruti van if you will see that the maruti van doesn't have any bonnet bonnet means the any engine compartment and what happens there is nothing to absorb the energy when the maruti van will hit to anything i am sure that the person is going to injured severely why the reason is very clear there is nothing to absorb energy so the intrusion to the car body will be more and 99% there is a chance that the person traveling in the maruti van will be either severely severely injured or will die so the engine compartment is also helping us a lot to absorb the energy to reducing the momentum if there is nothing in the car body to reduce the momentum there your end cap your regulation nothing is to make the safer car developed countries where the regulations are strictly followed by every manufacturer you will rarely i think i have not seen in my 15 years 12 years staying in germany i have never seen any car which is not having the engine compartment or like a car like a van which is not having any any mechanism or anything which can absorb the energy some people uh, who has joined uh, from abroad uh, definitely they can argue me uh, they have seen that a car which is called a smart uh, i i am not sure about uh, how many people know about this car uh maybe you guys can search on the internet it is a it is a daimler uh, uh you can say that oem is the daimler it is developed by the daimler and uh, this car is called a smart it is a two person car and uh, this car is also having a very small um, engine compartment yes you can argue me why and it's still this car is on board uh yes i tell you uh while designing the smart car they have uh, they have kept in mind that when the car is when this is smart car the small car and colliding then the another car should absorb the energy in this way they have stiffed the car too much and uh, you can see maybe the crash video available on the youtube about this car and uh, yes correct this is the smart car and uh, here there are two things thanks much again in this car you can see that the, the bonnet or the engine compartment compartment is very less and it has designed designed for the two principle one principle is when this car is going to collide with another car then another car should absorb the energy and in this way the momentum of this smart car will uh, will uh, reduce the velocity the, the the difference in velocity and the next point is the front wheel much can can you just uh, move your cursor to the front wheel and this front wheel yes this front wheel is going to absorb the energy in crash so basically based on these two principles this car has been designed okay so uh, i think uh, till now uh, the things are clear to everybody what is actually he, uh, happening here in the crash and how exactly the energy uh, principles and the momentum principles are working with the equations i have shown you that the smaller car is always uh, dangerous not dangerous i will say uh, he, uh, the, for the smaller car when it is hitting or when a small car or when a normal car is hitting to the uh, big truck or the rigid ball in this way it is really uh, dangerous uh, or the injury values of uh, to the occupant will be more then uh, yes i have shown with the equation and what is our job the our job is to reduce the energy and this is the challenge this is really a challenge 
you need a style you need a stylish car you need something innovative but another side as a safety engineer our challenge is to keep you safe and this is our job here this is very challenging but believe me this is very simple also in my 12 in my 12 years of staying in germany and 15 years plus working in the ca field believe me if you are just applying your basic 12 physics then there is nothing that you can't understand you can understand it very well which part is absorbing which what is actually happening and definitely we are going to train you on this yeah. everything i will try to give you my best experience which is which is not written in any book and that's why i am sharing with you these uh, these real uh, car examples of the real model so, uh, guys uh, type in physics if you are now uh, as i told that the challenge is to uh, keep the car safer or to reduce the energy to reduce the injury in the person and that's why i start now touching uh, now i am starting to touch the ca side and here uh, if you see that um, there are basic two types of analysis so uh, i think most of the guys working in the ca field they know that this is this one is the static and the another one is the dynamic analysis and the static analysis is simply implicit analysis and the next uh, analysis dynamic analysis explicit analysis which is uh, actually uh, happening at uh, for the it is uh, on which we are analyzing the complete car crash that is the dynamic and Explicit, and it works on the equation f is equal to one. Just I will touch little bit about the static analysis. It is working on the principle f is equal to kx. Here is uh, f is the force, k is the thickness of the body, x is the displacement. It means that if you are applying a force on a body, and definitely the body is having this thickness here. This thickness means you can understand that the young modulus of a material. Or let's say you are just taking an example of the plastic, or if you are taking an example of the of the metal in that situation the young modulus that is you can say that the elastic elasticity and uh, here f is equal to k this is the basic uh, linear equation on which the implicit uh, analysis works the next i have told that the dynamic analysis i have already told you that the dynamic is actually the where the velocity or the acceleration is involved or the change in velocity is involved and here it is uh, a non linear equation and that's why f is equal to m it is very simple i have kept it very simple so you guys need not to effort with what is implicit what is what is explicit it is very simple that linear equation is implicit and when it is non linear equation f is equal to m a it is a non linear equation and that's why it is a explicit analysis now i will just touch two minutes about the challenges in both the analysis so here in implicit analysis you are you know that it is uh, as you are seeing here it is working on the principal f is equal to kf that is the force k is the stiffness so when you are analyzing uh, when you are doing any kind of analysis uh, here uh, you are you might be facing a lot of challenges the challenge is i tell you uh, here uh, you are uh, in a static analysis you take a body you apply a force and uh, uh, as a result of applying a force body get displacement and most of the time you are seeing that the solution is you are not getting the solution you are challenging a lot of problems what why the solution is not converge i am not getting the answer the reason is very clear here you are seeing that, that f f is a matrix let's say force matrix k is the stiffness matrix and you are trying to calculate the displacement matrix so what happens to calculate the x it has to be f k inverse or say uh, sorry uh, yes f f and k you take the another side to the equation and then it will be inverse in that situation by inversing the matrix k matrix and taking it to the another side of the equation the solution get diverged and that is the basic problem in the implicit so guys here just one simple tip you don't apply the force you apply the displacement in implicit uh, analysis and you calculate the force you will not face as much as problem in the implicit analysis now coming to the challenge to the dynamic analysis dynamic analysis yes there is a explicit analysis for here uh, there are a lot of factors which Uh, are really making sometimes trouble the, as i told that these are non linear equations and the in non linear equations there are a lot of uh, non linear matrix matrix matrices 
which has to be solved by the solver and uh, sometimes you are facing the no shootout problem or you are facing some another kind of problem just due to the non-linear behavior of the equation. <laughs> okay, now uh, we can go to the next slide. Yes, so uh, before moving further, guys, just type in IE, explicit, implicit, implicit, explicit, so that everyone uh, is clear about it. Are you clear about what is happening with explicit, implicit? Correct, so static and dynamic, that is what we are looking at. And uh, dynamic is, dynamic load is something which changes its magnitude and or direction with respect to time. So this is something which is a dynamic load. And to solve this dynamic load problem, we are using a, a explicit solver, which is going to be a direct uh, solving numerical method. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. So, uh, Prakash, uh, next slide. Here you go. Uh, Nachiket, uh, can you just go to the previous slide? Yes, sure. Uh, Nachiket, uh, before touching to the fall, uh, next slide, uh, because next slide is uh, basically um, uh, on the end cap. So, I just want to uh, understand that is every is everything is clear to everybody uh, till here, so that we can uh, take few at least five questions here. Uh, so that the people can understand and then I will go to the next slide. Just five no questions. No problem. So anyone has a question about this? So I'll just uh, scroll through these slides. Uh, the first is uh, laws of physics, as you can see. Then we have uh, first law, second law, third law, and then we are actually talking about uh, change in momentum. Okay, so this is something which is important. So we are, we are talking about uh, conservation, uh, principle of uh, uh, momentum conservation. So this is something which is important where uh, both the drivers are of same size weight, but one will be getting more injury, the other will be getting less injury. Okay, so Varad, uh, Varad is having a, uh, so he is asking to repeat, what are the challenges faced by implicit and explicit? The challenges I have already told that uh, in implicit, we are facing the challenge of the divergence, the equation get diverged and we are not getting the solution. The reason is I have already told you that it is working on the basic principle or basic equation f is equal to kx. You are applying a force, the body is having their stiffness. So the force matrix you are actually giving and stiffness matrix you are also giving. You are telling to the system to calculate the displacement matrix. And in this way to calculate the displacement, the stiffness matrix has to be inverse and then you will get the displacement matrix. And this inverse making the stiffness matrix inverse, the solution get diverged. Let's say you are having a, a 50,000 elements, okay, 50,000 elements in your analysis. So the 50,000 stiffness matrix, or let's say a matrix, uh, let's understand in this way, a, a stiffness matrix with the 50,000 uh, values will be formed. And when the solution is trying to inverse this, 50,000 stiffness uh, values inverse and taking it to the another side of the equation, it gets diverged. That is the basic challenge in the, in the implicit analysis. Okay. So uh, there is a question from, uh, uh, there is a question from, uh, just a second guys. So somebody's, I lost a question, just a second. Uh, I, was, I was reading it and it just went past. Okay. So uh, in real crash uh, simulation of full car, full vehicle, Forming effect, uh, do we consider or we, uh, we don't consider the forming effect? Actually, uh, here uh, I just remember a joke uh, uh, on the cigarette packet. It's written, it's written uh, warning is uh, dangerous to health and nobody cares. So in simulation also, guys, you shouldn't <laughs> care about the warnings. Warning comes, you just, warning means there are few things which is uh, uh, which is just you can say that, that from the numerical point of view it is uh, the, the, solute, the solver need more uh, input from your side but unfortunately you don't have or few things it's like uh, there are some standard things let's say in contact uh, the solver needs some parameters that parameter is zero so it says that warning this parameter is zero so warning you shouldn't care correct okay <laughs> Uh, the force equation, so Abhinay is asking a question, the force equation should also include damping force and spring force, is it right? 
sorry uh, once again uh, the force equation should also include damping force and spring force so abhinav yes it is right that is cx dot plus uh, uh, plus the actual spring force that is kx again but to be very frank in explicit scenario uh, the dominant part is uh, mass into acceleration okay so yeah. that's something which is very small to be very frank that's why prakash has only considered mass into acceleration okay so any other thing <laughs> any other question vijay krishna is asking does tesla cyber truck have a crumple zone so i think uh, yeah. we have to ask elon elon musk what he has done uh, actually um, i tell you uh, here um, any uh, any car or any uh, truck uh, i mean for truck definitely uh, they are bigger in mass and uh, it it will be really severe when a truck collide with a rigid wall or truck collide with a truck then Correct. this is definitely Correct. severe uh, you can say the first case scenario in collision so uh, as of now there is no basic uh, end cap made for the analysis or making the truck safer because the already wheels are so big the mass is so big so the change in momentum will be less you can say that the change in velocity will be less and the driver is also sitting on a very high uh, side so uh, when it is heading to uh, any car or uh, any small object then uh, truck driver is really very uh, less injured in compared to car so all the uh, all the end cap assessments and the regulations are the for passenger vehicles not for commercial vehicles yeah okay so uh, another question is uh, uh, welding effect is considered in full vehicle crash sorry welding effect yes yes welding is also considered and um, as i told that uh, in sub system analysis uh, the it is more detailed analysis so when you are developing a when you are developing a seat when you are developing a instrument panel then you are considering the welding in more detailed way but uh, my experience is that if uh, two parts are welded together then welding is more stronger in compared to parents part so uh, if any uh, rupture is going to take place then the it, then there will be no breakage in itself the welding the breakage will be in the parts so you can think in this way if a proper seam welding or proper spot welding has been done so i am talking about proper huh? just just be careful that proper proper uh, welding has been done the spot welding or the laser welding or uh, uh, let's say uh, normal welding or friction welding when it has been properly done then the welding is uh, stronger than the parents part so my observation is in 90% cases the parent part is going to break or rupture first in compared to welding but definitely uh, i have seen in my career that the welding has been modeled in very detailed way and with some deletion of uh, elements as the force is reaching to that particular value to the weld elements the weld get deleted and in this way the welding is simulated but in complete car crash we are not simulating the welding in such a detail it's not possible first and second thing we are focusing on injuries of the person we are not focusing on failure of the building correct okay so there are more questions so the guys those who uh, didn't got the answer i try to reply few of the questions but uh, just uh, let's move forward with end cap yeah sure i have told that uh, now we are just moving and uh, to the forward and uh, most of the questions we are going to cover in the last okay now uh, as i told that the objective of the end cap is to uh, make the occupant safer so here basically uh, there are a lot of end caps available nowadays but in earlier 90s there were only two end caps euro end cap and us end cap so uh, now almost every country here i have written every country but not every country there are 162 countries in the world or more than that uh, i don't remember exact number but most of the countries big countries they are having their own end cap systems <laughs> so uh, here you can see that uh, the first I, as i told that most researches come out from the us end cap and the euro end cap and but other end caps are also like uh, um, asian end cap Japanese end cap, Korean end cap, K end cap, end cap is Korean end cap, 
CN cap is China and cap CIASI is China Insurance Automotive Safety Index. That is also one N cap, not N cap. Actually, this is just for the insurance company. Yeah. So this is like IHS uh, equivalent, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. And the global N cap in the last one global N cap. So uh, here um, I have met with the director of the Euro N cap. His name is Andrea C. And uh, he told that uh, they are planning to make a global end cap. And the biggest challenge for them is because you know there are a lot of end caps. And um, what is actually the challenge when there are a lot of end caps and every country is having its own end cap? Let's say you are, uh, let's say Tata, um, uh, Tata wants to sell Indica in Europe. Okay. And uh, they have developed a car and now they want to sell it. So definitely they have to go, uh, they have to uh, get the five star rating for, for the as per Euro and car. Now the same car they want to sell in US. Now they have to uh, again go for the uh, this uh, NCAP assessment and uh, make it this car fit with the US NCAP. Now they are, they want to sell this car in Australia. So again, they have to, uh, they have to change or they have to optimize the system of the car in the, in the Australian NCAP. So uh, uh, my communication with the director of the Euro NCAP, he told that they are trying to uh, make the global NCAP so that one car company, when they are fulfilling the global NCAP, then they can launch or sell the car anywhere. But the biggest challenge with them is he uh, he told that they most of the countries they are not cooperating and their replies are also very slow i mean uh, they are just uh, introducing some systems based on their research or something and they are sending to the global end cap that okay this is they want to uh, this is the, our finding or this is our research now we want to incorporate in the global end cap so they are telling that they are not responding to the years as the things are just going on and it's not actually in the last they found that global end cap is not so feasible and it's not maybe it's not pos possible at this point of time to uh, implement so uh, that is the main problem with the global end cap now uh, I move further that uh, all NCAPs, as I told that uh, they are actually uh, calculating the injury values in the country. For example, uh, injury values, what I mean, I tell you. Most of the guys, they are working uh, in the subsystem analysis. For example, they are, um, let's say uh, one example of subsystem is seed system analysis. So seed system, uh, you are just thinking, you can just think in this way, uh, the frontal impact, in frontal impact, the dummy is uh, on the seed, belted, and you apply the pulse and just you shoot, okay? What happens actually, uh, when you are, uh, when you are seeing the frontal class analysis, then the dummy is moving forward and it is restricted by the belt. Uh, and when it is restricted by the belt, then definitely there is a push uh, on the dummy chest to the inside, or let's say in uh, opposite to the opposite to the velocity. Let's say. So this chest deflection, this is one injury criteria or injury values. So you can think in this way: uh, in a car crash, when uh, when car is crashing and the person uh, chest is just hitting the steering column, then there will be a big uh, intrusion applied on the chest and there will be an injury on the chest. And sometimes a person can die also if the force is reaching more than four feet. So this is the injury actually it's called. Let's say uh, one car crash and in car crash the knee is touching to the instrument panel and uh, unfortunately there are some hard things behind the instrument panel and the knee broken. So we are trying to make whole body of the passenger safe in the car crash and that is calculated by the end cap and end cap based on this uh, injury values we calculate the points of the particular load case i will explain you more uh, in more detail so here the injury values for example the hip values i mean head injury it's called this is called in uh, crash uh, language hip value Chest deflection that is also one injury. Uh, TBI index. TBI index it calculates the force on the TBI. Humor force. 
rib deflection uh, rib deflection so in side crash uh, the rib deflection because in side crash the uh, barrier is hitting from the side uh, on the door of the car and then um, the chest i mean there are the ribs in the chest and they are going to get the higher intrusion so that in this way we want to uh, make the ribs safe so this is uh, rib deflection is also one injury values so based on these values actually the points are calculated for a particular load case what i mean here for the particular case i am going to explain in the next slide but before that, going to the next slide i want to tell you what is actually the occupant safety what is actually the euro and cap and how exactly it has been divided in different different um, uh, different different uh, you can say that uh, 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 Same analysis systems. Yeah. yeah. So here, can you please go ahead? Yeah, here. So here you are. Oh, yes. Uh, so here you are seeing that one uh, typical uh, end cap, the frontal impact, uh, and here uh, uh, you are seeing in the front of the car there is a rigid barrier. This is one of the typical load case, and we call it a rigid barrier test. The velocity of the car is 50 km per hour. So on uh, uh, driver side, you are seeing the two dummy. Uh, sorry, uh, on the front side, you are seeing the two dummy, and on the rear side, there is also one five percent dummy. So uh, basically, everything is uh, for a particular case, load case. Everything is defined by the euro end cap or US end cap or or any end cap. Then what should be the velocity? Which dummy should sit? Where it should sit? There are the complete guideline for a particular load case. Here, if you are talking about the ratings, so how exactly uh, the weightage of the rating is actually divided in four parts. So the maximum part goes to the 40% weightage, goes to the occupant protection. So what does it mean that auto, uh, occupant protection is having the maximum weightage in the end cap rate? It means that Euro end cap is focusing a lot on the occupant's injury. The, their aim, aim, the aim of any end cap is to save the person, to save the, his life. And believe me, they are targeting that if a car is hitting to rigid barrier or to a truck or car to car, the person should come out from the car and just stand and see his car or oh, what happened. So they want to make the car so safer that there should be no injury and the person should come out easily from the car after the crash. Here I just tell you one thing and it is really pity that uh, uh, I think in 2018 I heard that India is also going to launch its own NCAP and that is called Bharat NCAP. Yeah. They were uh, trying to implement from 2020, which uh, I mean in 2018, I heard about this news that Bharat and NCAP is going to launch in 2020, but still they have not come up with any NCAP and it's really uh, not good. Correct. And this advantage is taken by the foreign manufacturers and Volkswagen, they are selling their car, the Volkswagen Polo here in India and that car is not safe. The same design, everything is safe in Europe. It is five star car, but in India it is zero star or maybe one star. The reason is very clear there is no end cap launched by Indian government, there is no Bharat end cap is still, in, uh, is still implemented here. So, uh, yes, regulations are there. I have seen the regulations uh, by Indian government, and um, it is also really. Uh, not good that they have just uh, in regulations they have just included one uh, frontal impact case and one side barrier case but there is no pole impact case uh, load case and um, so in regulation if anybody is uh, fulfilling the criteria of the frontal impact and the side barrier crash they can sell their car here and in this situation these advantages has been taken by some foreign manufacturers like Daimler, Volkswagen, they are launching the car with some, uh, some uh, less safety parameters and uh, 
it's uh, they are saving the cost but just based on their name or just uh, it is a Volkswagen car or it is a Daimler car that people think that it is safer but it's not because there is not a very uh, good regulations and Bharat NCAP is still failing or is still not launched here so they need not to follow any obligations and they are just make I, I just for example I tell you just a very basic things which I found with one of my Maruti colleague he is working in Maruti and uh, government says that here in India you see you wear the seat belt and it is safe uh, the Maruti car is still not safe when you are wearing the seat belt. The reason is one component or load limiter it is missing in that car. I don't know what is the exact scenario right now, uh, maybe, but I am telling you this uh, scenario in uh, 2018. Till 2018, there was not no load limiter in the it's, Yeah, it's getting delayed. It was called as Bharat New Vehicle Safety Assessment Program. Yeah. And uh, it's not uh, going to come uh, any sooner than 2022. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now coming back again to the point, uh, as I told that my experience is more towards the uh, real uh, field, so that's why sometimes I switch to the... Um, uh, to the <laughs> no problem. Uh, ...models. And here uh, I am again coming back to the occupant safety. I, as I told that the maximum weightage um, is uh, in the Euro and cap uh, is uh, from the occupant safety. And in occupant safety, there are mainly three points of uh, three uh, three load cases actually what they are covering. So one load case is the frontal impact. Uh, yes, frontal impact is divided in different or in subcategories also like uh, of the deformable barrier test or uh, now a new crash has come in Euro and Cap that is called M, uh, MBD lead test. I am just going to show on the next slide. So uh, frontal impact has been also divided in different subcategories. Uh, the next test is called the side impact. Side impact is divided in two categories called the barrier test and the pole test. So uh, the occupant safety is having the maximum weightage or the maximum points uh, or the maximum influence you can understand in this way in a star rating. So if your car is safe to the occupant, then out of five, maybe you are getting two and a half stars. So in other, let's say in other uh, star rating, your car is failing, but in occupant safety, the car is passing, then definitely you will be achieving till two and two and a half star. Now coming, the next is the child uh, protection. The child protection weightage in the five star rating is 20%. Pedestrian uh, protection also 20% and safety assistant is also 20%. So here, uh, child occupant, uh, Protection is, um, yes, uh, here actually in India it's not followed, but uh, in uh, European countries or in US, there is a uh, child seed and uh, child protection uh, is also having the weightage of uh, 20%. So they are making the child safe with, uh, in child seed. And uh, next is the pedestrian protection. Pedestrian protection is uh, when a car is hitting with a slow speed uh, to the any pedestrian, then pedestrian should save. What does it mean save? Pedestrian should save means uh, what happens when a car is hitting with a slow velocity to any pedestrian, then it is going to hit maximum in the knee zone of a person, knee. Okay. So yes. uh, when it is hitting to the knee from the side, so there is a less, there is a really more chances that the ligament of the knee will break or the joint between two uh, bones, the humor and tibia, this is called the ligament, that will break. So uh, they are trying to, uh, in pedestrian safety, we, uh, we calculate the leg injury and we make sure that when car is hitting with a low velocity then uh, to a person, then knee should not break. That is first thing. And the second thing in pedestrian safety, uh, you can just imagine in this way when a car is hitting to the pedestrian, so uh, it is hitting in the knee area and the person is falling on the bonnet of, on, of the car. So when the person is falling on the bonnet of the car, then his head is going to collide with the bonnet. So we are, cal we are making the bonnet of the car softer so that when the person head is hitting to the bonnet, it shouldn't get a severe head injury. 
so these two things we are calculated in the pedestrian safety and um, just for your knowledge i have worked in both the field as a project uh, leader in uh, in pedestrian safety as well as in occupant safety great okay and now coming to the safety assistant safety assistant is called the active safety for example uh, you uh, you have not wear the seat belt there is a alarm signal uh, you just wear the seat belt this is called the active safety there are some sensors uh, in front of the car which detects the collision that is also called the active safety so the active safety is also having or you can say that the safety assistant is also having a 20% weight in the calculation of the five star rating yes correct. so please go ahead yeah so uh, before we move forward to the last uh, slide uh, when we are talking about uh, injury when we are talking about uh, all these kind of test we are actually working on a virtual prototype and a virtual prototype is typically being developed or being made uh, in a virtual environment which which is called as computer aided engineering so we apply stiffnesses we apply all the properties we apply materials we apply we make sure that everything is as close as possible to the physical world but it is typically an approximation of the physical uh, prototype and a simply definition of a prototype is one as to one working model so it has to be one as to one and it has to work so that's why we have to understand how actually uh, the solvers the explicit solver works and we have to also understand how to build a model and that's where uh, lno is actually uh, helping engineers to build their skills uh, in the solver department uh, since last 7 years so we are uh, so we are actually giving training to students currently also uh, on ls dyna which is of course a leading solver for explicit analysis and recently been taken over by ansys so it it's coming under a big umbrella so it's going to be here for very long years now so we do uh, provide training before you go for any kind of an ncap uh, understanding you have to actually understand what is happening uh, to the virtual prototype okay so this is something which is uh, which many of you are knowing but ls dyna so many of you may be only doing model preparation or meshing part but then you can uh, upskill yourself uh, to ls dyna to a solver and we will be there to help you so you can just search uh, on internet lno or as i said you can just uh, uh, join me on linkedin it will be very easy for me to communicate through linkedin because every day i am available and we have online batches as well live training so we don't do recorded sessions we do live training i do the training so i do the ls dyna training uh, that's where you get an advantage okay so uh, moving forward uh, i'm going to have oh wait a second yes so here you go akash okay uh, no. Uh, i have to just uh, to make you understandable actually uh, injury and what are the uh, injury values i have just taken a last year till 2019 um, there was a offset deformable barrier test that was called the odp test so uh, i attended the um, i mean i met with the director of this uh, euro ncap and uh, they uh, he told me he told me that they were planning uh, i mean uh, in there was plan of the euro ncap you can say that uh, they wanted to uh, switch from this deformable barrier fixed deformable barrier to this to the moving deformable and this is the typical load case example this is a new load case for the frontal impact which i have considered here to uh, make you guys understandable what is actually the injury value so here the picture on the left hand side uh, with the car and the barrier you are seeing here you, uh, there is a moving deformable barrier but till 2019 this barrier was fixed actually fixed in the wall but now it is a deformable barrier. so here it is called mpbb so moving progressive deformable barrier okay so uh, you are seeing that uh, uh, the barrier on the top where it is written mpbb just below that there is a barrier and uh, this barrier is moving with the 50 kmph and your car is also moving with the 50 kmph and it's going to collide uh, with your car and uh, in this way 
this is the frontal impact here you are seeing also a new dummy uh, i mean the 2019 we were calculating with a, a hybrid three dummy but now it has been moved to the thor dummy and uh, here you it is more sensitive you can say a lot of modifications the sensors and uh, uh, you can say that more refined way this dummy has been developed particularly for the frontal impact so in occupants uh, in driver side you are seeing a four dummy 50 percentile and uh, on the right hand side you are also seeing the 50 percentile dummy and on the second row you are seeing the child dummy q6 and q10 uh, here just i want to tell you uh, when we are uh, calculating or when we are developing a car so in in uh, uh, in a load case of frontal impact which you are right now seeing on the screen we are not considering all the data we are just considering one dummy let's say driver side dummy and we are considering a fixed mass of the passenger side and for the children side children for the children the reason is we um, here there are two reasons actually the max maximum injury i mean uh, when you are taking the case of uh, frontal impact so the in driver side and the passenger side we are calculating in the two load case because there is sometimes the numerical instability and the model is also very big when you are considering all the four dummies so what they are considering uh, considering actually so driver they are uh, calculating separately and the passenger they are calculating separately we are not calculating both driver and passenger at in the same car i as i told that the reason is you can consider the two airbags uh, two dummy so the model will be too big and it will take more time to solve so uh, we want the solution quick so uh, the aim is evening you are should you are firing the simulation and the morning when you are coming uh, then you should have the simulation result so that's why we are just considering one dummy so uh, driver dummy we are considering uh, in one model and passenger dummy we are calculating in another model definitely in the last we are going to calculate the injury values for both so here uh, on the right hand side you can see that uh, there are the injury values the first one you are seeing the head and neck after that you are seeing a uh, separator line then uh, you are seeing the um, injury value of the chest and uh, you are seeing the injury values of uh, abdomen then you are seeing the injury values of pelvis humor knee so this is actually the lower body part and then you are seeing the separator then tibia actually so uh, here uh, if you will see that the four points the maximum points are four for each reason so the one reason is head and neck so here you get the four point the um, next reason is chest and abdomen here here you are getting the four points so the next reason is pelvis humor and knee so that there, here is also four points and tibia and foot these all together is also tibia and foot together is also a four point so the total load case point for this uh, mpdb test is 16 points okay here on the on the green uh, column in the green column on the top you are seeing that the four points then you are seeing the zero points and you are seeing the capping so four points means if you are uh, if your neck injury it means that you are calculating uh, you are uh, seeing the hic value hic values and 15 means this is for the 15 millisecond so you are seeing the hic hic values for the 15 millisecond and if it is less than 500 then or uh, let's say 499 then your point is four so this injury values is converted in the points and then you can you get your points for that particular injury values okay here for the zero points means when it is crossing more than 700 then you are getting the zero then the question comes here what is the meaning of capping values capping values there is it is called the uh, maximum or you can say that the limiting values so capping values means you are seeing the capping values till chest deflection okay below that there is no capping values mentioned here so capping values means if any of the values any of the injury values where the capping is defined is crossing let's say for uh, example of the hic okay first hic 15 
the maximum values is 700 more than 700 and the capping values is also more than 700 so when your capping values when your heat value is more than 700 so you have crossed the capping values okay and from the rest other points less let's say your uh, neck injury is less your chest injury is less abdomen other other points all are green but in for one hic value you cross the capping values then your complete points are zero okay then your test is completely zero you now you when you you are crossing the capping limit then you need not to forget then you need not to calculate any further values and you can say that okay now this is we have to take some action because we have crossed for hic value the capping values and in this way this test is getting the overall points zero and the frontal impact is not getting any points in the occupant zone that is the meaning of the capping values correct so to convert the injury values to the points there are interpolating there are interpolation equations and based on uh, i mean you put the values uh, your injury values in that uh, linear uh, in the interpolation equation and you calculate the points that's what nachiket me, uh, means that these points in most of the companies you calculate they calculate with the help of software but i know that what is basically basic logic uh, or which equation uh, has been followed to calculate this injury point uh, injury values in the points right. and that i know that how to calculate manually and this is uh, you can think in this way you are just working in some company where they don't have the uh, software to uh, calculate it uh, automatically so at least you should know the formula or maybe sometimes it happens that You have calculated your load in, uh, some mistakes in developing that automated uh, softwares for calculating the points, mm. and always you are seeing that HIC, HIC value is low. So you should know the manual method also, so that you can check the authenticity of uh, of the software right. which has been developed. Like, uh, like we do in uh, after we do a CA result or check the CA result post processing, we do a physics check whether yes. everything is correct or not similarly we will be able to understand uh, using uh, your method or using the method uh, which is manual method uh, whether yes. all the systems are uh, correctly giving the answers which are required or not correct yeah okay so, uh, so guys how many of you have understood uh, this particular concept of points uh, zero points capping just type in points p you can just type in points it's a very simple system it is to understand whether you have scored full four points or you have scored zero points and then between zero and four there is going to be a, a permutation and combination and which is extremely important because now we are not measuring anything on vehicle am i right prakash we are measuring yes. everything on uh, on the occupant correct that this is what is happening book. The uh, Nachiket here, just I want to mention uh, uh, your point, what you want to tell here. Uh, in the last, you are calculating in the occupant safety or in any NCAP, you are calculating everything on the dummy. You are not Absolutely. calculating anything on the car. Absolutely right. And that's what a CA engineer should understand that uh, the final assessment is done on dummy. It yes. is not being done on the vehicle structure. So. Uh, uh, to be very frank, uh, the other question, what, uh, which was about forming, uh, I think the answer to that question is also lying here. Because if your ultimate aim is to make sure that injuries are as low as possible, uh, these small niggles, uh, you have to take care uh, in the process of developing your CAE model. Uh, here, Nachiket, I just uh, want to mention one thing. Uh, in my uh, career, uh, I have seen that uh, to develop uh, to develop a car is uh, for a oem is not so complicated the reason is i tell you they get the fixed problem and there is the solution fixed solution so uh, i have the uh, a lot of real uh, scenario problems and uh, there are the fixed solutions are followed in the company or uh, by the OEMs. Right. So um, I have uh, worked almost on five uh, projects in occupant safety and two projects in the pedestrian safety. So whenever the problem comes, 
uh, they simply apply the basic physics what i have explained you in my first three slides and believe me anything any problem in analysis or in designing you can solve just by applying a simple physics and your problem is solved so absolutely right yep almost all the all the cases all the problems i have seen and i i have also seen the solutions what they are following like for example in case of airbags um they play with the vent holes in case of when the rip deflection is high they are playing with the side airbags so there are a lot of things and that is my aim uh, with the help of you to is to just give my knowledge and i want to give my all real life real practical knowledge is to all you guys so that you just don't restrict yourself with the sub assemblies or just doing and uh, what you are doing you should understand that what actually happens in the last in the last you are going to work for a dummy and the aim is to reduce the injury values and that is right. the ultimate goal absolutely right absolutely right so i think uh, uh, guys you are all clear what happened what is happening from starting from basic physics of a crash to measuring all the uh, uh, all the injury criteria on dummy so type in dummy if you have understood what is what is it that we are doing in mcap just type in dummy so that we all are on same page guys be quick so is it clear what is happening so we are actually converting all the values which are there or all the structure which is which we have designed we are trying to measure everything on dummy or on the occupant okay so basically these crash test dummies so there are thor dummies there are thumbs dummies so there is a development from toyota side which is like a, a total human uh, model for safety which is which looks like an actual an actual man or a woman and they are developing it uh, along with ls dyna and along with other guys so this is a, something which is a crazy development happening and as I, as prakash said uh, the ncap is something which is a user it, it actually happens on a showroom car am i right prakash so it never happens on a design car in cap it, always it happens on a showroom car it's design car actually um, with the help of cae we try to uh, reduce the real testing so you also work that there is one dv and the pv phase yes and yes. Uh, after that there is a serial production you know all these yeah. things so, so what i mean to say is uh, the final results so when ncap declares them uh, they are on the showroom cars am i right yes um, actually it happens in this way first the oem calculates by its own and when they are calculating by their own and they are sure that their car is going to get the five star rating then they are launching the car and with the claim of yes the car is five star rating and when euro and cap feels that okay they should test this they should test the car then they are just picking some random oem models from Correct. the showroom you are right euro and cap give the assessment on the showroom cars actually so but uh, this and cap cap value is first calculated by oem uh, self yes they are launching the car with the claim of its five star rating and then euro and cap feels that okay maybe it's not five star or maybe they are just taking some random uh, car picking some random cars and then they are testing and if it is not matching then they say that no it's not five star car or sometimes it is also that oem say that to the euro and cap test my car and give the ratings in that way they have to pay for that okay okay so you can have a self certification kind of thing before you even yeah, you just claim it you know because i have i have also seen that one uh, it is just uh, the i mean um, the andrea c the director of zero and cap he showed me one presentation uh, i will not name he as a oem it is well known oem and it is from japan and they they tried to cheat euro and cap believe me they tried to cheat and they uh, they caught actually you know euro and uh, their five star rating was lost for that particular <laughs> so sometimes it happens <laughs> okay. good okay so uh, guys i am going to uh, uh, go to prakash again just last question prakash do you uh, do you want to share something uh, about this uh, uh, anything further anything more about ncap uh, because we have uh, uh, we have another maybe 5 minutes to close down uh nachiket rather explaining more i will try to pick some more questions because uh, i want to uh, um i want to just uh, just get a feeling that how much people have understood me and uh, if we can pick some random questions maybe five or 10 i would like okay. to answer so uh, before we go for questions i am going to launch a quick poll again it is just two options you have to pick so here you go this is about session feedback so i'm just launching the poll guys be quick
so i have launched a poll with uh, how was the session uh, how 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 exactly we are uh, we are going through uh, whether you are uh, willing to join a detailed live ncap training program with prakash and myself because i will be still there uh, as a moderator of course i am not the uh, main tutor but uh, uh, there are uh, there are chances that we are going to launch this program mid june and we will keep you all posted am i right prakash so we will be planning it for mid yeah. june uh, and uh, we will come out with a proper what you can say uh, a complete uh, syllabus uh, what are we going to cover how many sessions will be there all sessions will be live for sure and then we will uh, try to support how it is going on all these things and yes thank you guys there are still 20 people remaining to give a feedback guys your feedbacks are going to uh, be the fuel for our future sessions so make sure that you are giving feedback uh, only 85% people have voted so still 15% are remaining guys be quick just give us a feedback whether you like the session whether you will be you you are planning to be a part of this community of occupant safety engineers which are going to be essentially not just the ca guys but the product guys so they will be more looking on to the product they will be more looking on to the advancements in the engineering and i really want you guys to give a feedback so that everyone understands what needs to be done uh, at our organizational level and everyone will be in a position to deliver the best possible knowledge which is available in uh, in the industry okay almost 90 plus percent voting is done so i'm just going to uh, end the polling thanks a lot guys and uh, uh, we are open for questions for next uh, 5 6 7 7 minutes so we have 7 minutes for questions i'm going to moderate uh, somebody raised a hand uh, i don't know uh, okay nobody is there so nishant is asking uh, would you uh, would like to know the difference between type approval and ncap what exactly does the Indian Auto uh, Incorporation follow as there was a requirement that all vehicle needs to pass crash test? Yes. So Nishant, that is what we uh, discussed actually that Bharat New Vehicle Safety Assessment Program is being shared. Uh, there are some OEMs who are objecting it because their vehicles will not be passing that criteria for sure. It is a clone of a global NCAP. So there are possibilities that it may not launch soon. Okay. Are any specific NCAP regulations for electric cars? So, yes. Akshay, uh, yes, over to you, Prakash. Yes, uh, yes, Nachiket, there are some specific regulations for the electric car. These are the same load cases, but with, but with some different uh, injury values. Not oh. all, but some, some smaller parameters. Okay, okay, great. So, uh, yes, homologation certificate Nishant is always there. Uh, we even have to pass the AIS regulation. Uh, pedestrian safety rahul is asking is going to be mandatory in india yes rahul you are right but uh, the thing is we are trying to match along with bharat stage 6 that is euro 6 we are trying to match even the safety standard but because of this lockdown it is going to get delayed by another six months for sure can you give a small brief insight in what uh, goes into injury calculation so i think this is more relevant uh, can you give a, a small brief insight in what uh, goes into injury calculations in a practical test. Say how HIC is calculated. So, Prakash. Actually, uh, Nachiket, um, to calculate the injury values, there are uh, really some complicated equations. If anybody is interested, I can forward or I can share these equations. But uh, believe me, by seeing the equations, it is really hard to understand this. That's why in the dummy, they are having some uh, different different uh, sensors you can say that for uh, for measuring the chest deflection there is one uh, accelerometer so with help of these you calculate the injury values but yes if you want to understand that the equations or the basic logic behind that i have the equations with me and i can share with you okay great uh, another question from rahul is uh, in general uh, on your overall experience uh, prakash how is the vehicle pulse improved? Uh, OLC in short. Sorry, can you please repeat the question? Uh, yes, I will repeat. Uh, in general, uh, on your overall experience, how is vehicle pulse improved? Uh, he's saying OLC. Uh, in short, he, wa he wants the answer. Uh, actually, vehicle pulse, uh, as I told that the major 
play is the delta v i mean you try to uh, reduce the delta v the difference in velocity as much as possible and another side you have to make your body enough strong so uh, the i mean the pulse is calculated from the car so it's not like the uh, uh, we are applying the pulse on the you have seen in my last presentation this m uh, m p d v test we are applying the initial velocity to correct for our we are not applying in this developer for example uh, my job is to calculate the whole car crash so i will calculate whole car crash and, and uh, i will uh, take out the crash pulse from this car and i will give to the seat system supplier this is the crash pulse and for this pulse you should Uh, optimize your uh, sub assembly or you should design this correct correct so correct. the crash pulse is not optimized and a crash pulse is not applied on the car initial velocity on, applied on the car and the crash pulse is calculated from the car yes so uh, sanjay is asking a question recently i read one article in auto tech review magazine they mentioned like euro encap toughness uh, test protocols euro encap toughness test protocols with new changes that is introduction of a new moving barrier to moving car frontal crash test will be expanding to both occupants and collision partner how difficult it is to analyze in virtual environment uh, as compared to the real test scenario uh, it is not difficult we are analyzing in the same way what they are uh, doing in a physical test so uh, for us actually it is simpler for them it will be difficult uh, the reason is very clear that uh, in reality you have to measure because for any uh, any load case analysis uh, there are guidelines for from the euro and cap side even they uh, they have the fit, they uh, they inform about or there is a fixed uh, protocol even for the camera position so okay. uh, you can think in this way in real crash the setting up a real crash test model is much more difficult in compared to the <laughs> see any model the fe model yeah because you yeah. can you know we can always calculate it we can calculate it millimeter by millimeter but for them it is difficult to set yes and i think you have also worked in the real car real crash you know <laughs> see this is much more difficult to setting up the real crash model. so for yeah. us it is not difficult any kind of load case to set up but it is difficult for uh, real test correct 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 so rohit has raised hand uh, rohit i will unmute you uh, you can ask me your question yeah hi sir uh, hi prakash uh, i just uh, wanted to know uh, like does ncap suggest oem for the some design modification of the structure of the car? no never never no okay and uh, the further question is that uh, how it is taken care uh, for the safety while other nvh and fatigue durability are also uh, has to be considered so how uh, design has to be safe for a uh, occupant safety actually uh, rohit uh, i already told you that you know ncap is nothing to do with your uh, our structure sub assembly structure it's nothing to do with uh, that uh, the nvh or the fatty you are the oem is doing for their uh, own development you can say that the euro ncap is not no uh, ratings they have you have i have already in in my previous slide and you can can you go just to the previous slide yes sure yeah here in the previous slide you are seeing that uh, on this slide you are seeing that uh, there are the weightage for the occupant safety there are the weightage for the pedestrian protection but there is no weightage for the nph of fatigue or something like this so you okay. you know cap is nothing to do with that but okay. yes if there will be no uh, fatigue analysis or your body is not a stronger much uh, much stronger so maybe you are getting the five star rating but in the last the customer is not happy because after running of let's say 1 lakh km some welding is broken or something is broken then you are always taking the car to the for repairing and you are right <laughs> these things are actually for the oem purpose correct, correct. understood thank you yeah correct. rohit you can mute yourself yes uh, anyone uh, anyone else uh, just let me uh, scroll through the questions guys uh, give me a minute so we are just having 3 minutes left uh, okay so i see some question 
uh, in general, how much our pulse data and intrusion correlates with the test data? So Rushikesh is asking, in general, how much our pulse data and the intrusions correlate with the test data because restrained systems get designed on basis of pulse obtained from vehicle crash. So is there any deviation considered uh, while calculating airbag, uh, airbag firing and all these things? So I think Prakash just answered it. So it is basically we only measure what happens to the occupant, right? So we yeah. don't actually give any suggestion whether it is correlating with the uh, actual pulse or not and all these things. Just try to understand guys, uh, just try to understand you know, any NCAP is nothing to do with your development. So they pick the car random from the market, they test it and they just give you a proof that this car is five star that's it so uh, it is not that i have also asked uh, uh, directly to the director of uh, euro and cap i asked this question okay let's think in this way uh, there is a five star rating uh, euro and cap five star car a crash happens and uh, a person dies okay a person is dying and the car is five star rating so uh, have anybody Put case on the euro and cap that the car was five star rating and the person has died so your euro and cap has to pay because they have validated so they told that no we are not any uh, uh, claiming agency or something like that if the person is dying in a five star car so it is uh, it is very clear that we have tested for a particular load environment we have not calculated when the car is running at 120 kilometer per hour and it is five star and crashed and the person died we have not we are not certifying or claiming that the person will not die we just say that it is five star safe up to that is speed so it is just like uh, in, in this corona you can understand in this way if you are just at home you are safe that's it if somebody is getting corona at the home so you cannot sue to the government or uh, put a case to the government so in the same way it is NCAP also correct so a uh, last question Vishwanath is asking uh, hello Vishwanath uh, nice to see you after uh, a long time why it's needed to upgrade from uh, ODB uh, to uh, moving uh, MP, MPVD, to be very frank. Uh, as per my information, it is more realistic because uh, I think 5% crash happens with the static bodies. I mean, uh, when a car is just stopped and the another car hits, yes, you, the driver is seen somewhere else and they fit. But 90% is actually uh, the crash between two moving cars. And that's why, according to my point of view, it is more realistic that they have moved from ODB to MPD. Correct, correct, correct. That is right. Uh, okay, so Divakar uh, is asking if the results are so ir irregular, what's the use of testing? Who says it's irregular? <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, he misunderstood it. Uh, it is like if uh, if a ca car is tested for 60 km per hour, and if if a, uh, in actual scenario it was running at 120, then it doesn't mean that at 60 km per hour it wouldn't have performed as that of a test. So that is something. Uh, I, I would like to answer this uh, because this the same question also comes in my mind sometimes when I was moving this field. <laughs> Uh, uh, we are, uh, and I also uh, put this question directly uh, to some experts and, and um, I asked, okay, if a car, we are testing at a 50 km per hour, we are testing at a 60 km per hour and if the car is, uh, what is the reason of this uh, 50 km, 60 km from where it comes this, this speed? So actually in a crash scenario, uh, there are two things. When a crash happens, what happens? A person is running a car at 120 km and when he sees sudden uh, in front of uh, in front of him, when he sees some sudden obstructions or obstacles, he applies brake. So right. then he is reducing the brake and the average crash speed is 60 km per hour. Okay. And that's from where it comes the 60 km per hour or 50 km per hour. This, correct, this velocity. correct. So, so I think uh, actually, what is the uh, crash speed you can say? Correct, correct, absolutely right. So Apurva, uh, Apurva is from a, a defense background, uh, is good friend of mine. NCAP has ever tested an armored vehicle for a crash safety. Is there any regulation uh, from NCAP side to certified, uh, certify armored vehicles? Uh, 
व्हाट्स हिज नेम सॉरी अपूर्व अपूर्व भाई मैं आपको एक ही बात बोलना चाहूंगा आपकी व्हीकल गोलियों को बर्दाश्त करने के लिए बनाई जाती है उसका एन कैप क्या कर लेगा सो देयर इज नो एन कैप रेटिंग फॉर द आर्मर्ड व्हीकल्स ओके good so there will be something which is uh, related to uh, maybe some different category of testing yeah yeah good. actually uh, the defense uh, they are uh, testing uh, their vehicles against the blast against bullets so uh, you are making the body too stiff so in this way uh, they are not taking about the injuries of the person they are just taking that the person shouldn't die with the bullet or the blast Correct. so in this way uh, if the body is too stiff then uh, definitely uh, euro and cap it's really hard to get the five star rating for yes such. absolutely right i think a person inside will die in event of a crash when it is a armored vehicle sorry a person may die because it's an armored vehicle it's very stiff so there are chances that a, a, a occupant may not survive at all in event of a crash yeah but uh, armored vehicle the velocity is also not too high because Absolutely. they are really very heavy uh, and they are very stiff so and they are very less chance they are coming uh, at 120 km on the highway because Correct. you know armored vehicles are coming uh, sometimes uh, on the in the civil uh, correct uh, scenario you can say that and uh, that's why i see i think that uh, is i mean in 12 years or 15 years of my career i have uh, never uh, seen any kind of testing for the armored vehicles by you cap or any rating so definitely you can go through that you can calculate if the person is safe or not but these are very unlikely to happen yes happens. absolutely and uh, last question uh, govind is asking as you said mainly n cap is applicable for passenger cars how we can correlate ncap to autonomous electric vehicles uh, as i already told that ncap is uh, also for the autonomous electric vehicle for any kind of vehicle and in this way the regulations and the ncaps are same definitely there are some changes in the injury values there are some changes in the velocities there are some changes in regulations but the, the same load case is also for the autonomous vehicle because you know in the last, sometimes it's possible that maybe not autonomous vehicle by mistake some human the car is coming uh, under collision so uh, it is the same as i told that as you told in the beginning of your uh, this webinar any any kind of vehicle which is moving has yes. to be safe and in this way the autonomous should also yes correct and even there are chances that autonomy may fail and yeah. uh, it it goes into a crash so it's not like uh, it's going to always apply a brake yeah sure and the same thing you know if uh, autonomous vehicle is also going to crash either it will be a frontal crash or the side impact and the same regulation same things will be applied as i told that for the electric vehicles there are some changes in the regulations for or automated vehicles still those vehicles are not on road or at least not assessed Correct. by euro and cap so i still i am also not aware of any kind of change in rating for these uh, autonomous vehicle Correct. but my uh, information says that that the regulations and the end cap uh, values will be also the same or maybe even harder for the autonomous vehicle correct correct okay thanks a lot guys i think uh, we are closing our uh, session so we have already done a poll thank you very much uh, for uh, for being here for so long almost 2 hour 5 uh, minutes it is and uh, i really want to thank on behalf of heroes of engineering team uh, on behalf of elno team uh, mr prakash srivastava for giving his valuable time and it was really a fantastic session i saw that uh, in a feedback so it it was an excellent session thank you very much prakash thanks for spending time with us and as i said we are launching ncap first india's first ncap training program uh, in mid june so be uh, be connected with me on linkedin make sure that you are sending me linkedin connection request it is going to be nachiket phadke you can just search on linkedin and just try to connect with me so that you continuously get my messages on linkedin and even on facebook and you can watch our youtube channel uh, which is lno engineering learning center thank you very much thanks aniket you are most welcome uh, for your comments uh, sai most welcome uh, we will be arranging more sessions like this uh, thank you gautami uh, your your gautami are most welcome 
uh, yes yogesh you are most welcome thanks prakash so people are Thank raising you. hand anyone there uh, okay gautami uh, you want to ask something okay see you guys have a good night uh, make sure you are staying safe even if the lockdown is over make sure that you are not taking too much of a risk going out make sure that you are safe with your families uh, stay safe stay healthy and keep watching uh, this particular space for more content make sure you are connecting me to the linkedin not for my benefit for your own benefit so perfectly uh, perfectly normal day we have to spend from tomorrow and be cautious thank you very much thank you guys thank see you, you. Bye. yes bye. see you prakash bye 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 see you guys thanks thanks divakar yes yes sanjay we will do more sessions yes nitin you are most welcome divakar yes most welcome kamalpreet yes thank you akash bye see you guys see you see you everyone yes so i'm ending my meeting see you guys soon